All right, so what we've been working on for the last couple of days was working with two variable data. So we were looking at, for example, an X value and a Y value that had some sort of relationship, or maybe there was no correlation and there wasn't a relationship, but we could look at these in terms of an X axis and a Y axis to be able to see what was going on. We had two different sets of data, X data, Y data. The rest of this unit, so moving on to chapter 11, is gonna be looking at single variable data and how we can kind of look at a list of values and figure out how to draw some conclusions based on that. Now, as I mentioned before, a huge emphasis here is gonna be vocabulary, so make sure that you take a look over here and notice there's a whole list of vocabulary terms in just this very first section. So again, Quizlet is a great resource where you can start working on making some flashcards to help you prepare for the test. So measures of center are any measure that represents the center or what we would represent a typical value for a data set. Data set. And these are words that you've heard a zillion times. You've used mean, median, and mode since you were in elementary school. So just to kind of refresh on those things, let's take a peek at a couple of examples here. So the mean of a numerical data set is the sum of the data divided by the number of data values. Now here's something that is probably going to be new. In statistics, we have, sorry, that's my dog, we have a special symbol. Okay, he's done barking. Anyhow, in uh, statistics, we have a symbol that stands for the word mean and it's an x with a bar over the top and you know super creative as we are as mathematicians the very creative name that we came up with for this variable is x bar so if you see an x with a bar on the top that stands for the mean so here is a relatively small data set we have the numbers two six three eight seven eight and five and we want to find the mean of those numbers so the first thing that we have to do is find the sum. So we are going to add all of these up. So that'll be 2 plus 6 plus 3 plus 8 plus 7 plus another 8 and then plus 5. And once we're done adding all of those things up, we are going to divide that by how many numbers there are. And if we look, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Seven values. So we're going to divide by seven. So get out your trusty calculators and let's do that real quick. So finding the sum of the numbers in the top, that comes out to 39 when I put all that in my calculator. We're going to divide that by seven. And so that tells me that the mean X bar, I'm going to put in 39 divided by seven. And I get a whole long mess of stuff, 5.571428, so on, so on. So let's go ahead and just round to the tenths for right now. So we'll say 5.6. Whoops, I covered up the bar. There we go. So X bar, the mean, is equal to 5.6. So that is one of our types of measure of center. The next kind of measure of center, they're like the, all the three M's, is the median. And just like if you're driving down the highway, there's a median down the middle so that the two directions of traffic don't cross over each other. The median is the middle number of a data set. But what is really important is that it's only the middle number when the data values are in order. So you have to make sure that you put them in numerical value first. And then the last thing, if you don't remember this from learning this in previous classes, when a data set has an even number of values, then the median would be the mean of the two middle numbers. Basically, you're trying to find the number that's between the two middle numbers. So let's look at this data set. We need to put it in order first. So two is the smallest, then three, then five, then there's a six and a seven and two eighths. What a lot of people learned probably in middle school is to mark off end to end. So we can do that. So cross off the left side, cross off the right side, and keep doing that back and forth until, in this case, I ended up with just one number left in the middle. So that means the median is 6. There's no symbol for median, so we're just going to write that out, and you can abbreviate. Lastly, the third M is the 
mode. And mode, you can kind of remember because it rhymes, not really rhymes, but it kind of goes with the word most. So one thing that's kind of weird that people don't often remember is that there could be just one mode like we normally see, but there could also be no mode. If nothing shows up more than something else, there would be no mode. Or if one number showed up the same number of times as the other, basically like if there was a tie for the number that showed up the most, then there could be more than one mode. And so you have to watch out for those kinds of things. Now in our list, we only have one number that shows up more than one time, and that's eight. So the mode for this data set is eight. And that's that, okay? So I'm not gonna ask you to do a lot of calculating of mean, median, and mode because that is stuff that you've done in previous courses. As I mentioned before, our biggest concern in this unit is gonna be, now that you know already how to calculate this stuff, what do we do with it? What can we use this to figure out? What kind of conclusions can we draw? So let's go ahead and move down to the first example. We want to compare measures of center. So here is um, data about wages at an amusement park. This amusement park hires students for the summer and their students' hourly wages is what we see in the table. So they've given us eight different wages. So the first thing they want us to do is to find the mean, the median, and the mode of the hourly wages. So I would like for you to go ahead and put the video on pause, go ahead and give it a stop, and find the mean, median, and mode on your own so that you can come back and check if your answers are correct. All right, so here is what we end up with after we calculate. So X bar, the mean, when you add up all of those uh, dollar amounts, you get 77.2. There's eight of them, so we divide by eight, and that's how we get $9.65 per hour for the mean. The mode is 8.25. That's the only one that shows up more than once. And then the median, this is an example of where there wasn't a middle number, so we had to find the average of the two middle numbers. So to find the mean of two numbers, I add them together and divide by two, and that gives me $8.70 for the data. Now, this is sort of the harder question to answer. Which measure of center best represents the data? So take just a second to look back at the data and look at our three choices. So when we're trying to find the measure of center that best represents, we're saying which value is more typical. Like if you are applying for a job, the information might say someone makes the average, and average is misleading because that's not a, sti a statistics term, but they might say uh, workers usually make around $9.65 an hour. Would that really be true looking at this data? And so when we look at this, we say, no, the mean is not representative of the data because if I put $9.65 in that list, it would be higher than all of them except for one. So that doesn't represent a typical value. The mode, $8.25, $8.25, that's the lowest amount that anybody makes. And so in this case, $8.70, that seems to be the closest to what most of the dollar amounts are. So in this case, the median would be the, mes the best measure of center. Now, remember, you need to be able to write your explanation out in complete sentences. So here's what I'm going to write. Here's the sentences that I might use. I said the median is the best because $8.70 is closest to the middle and a typical value. Mean is too high and the mode is too low. So that's a good way to kind of explain why we picked that. Now, if you are like me, you looked at that data and you kind of saw that one of those values does not seem to fit with the rest of them. And hopefully you thought the $16.50 was kind of out of place. That's a lot for one person to make, especially compared to all of the other ones. So an outlier is a value in your data set that's either much higher or much lower than the rest of the data. It, it's sort of like on Sesame Street, one of these things is not like the other. It doesn't seem to fit in with the rest of the data. 
So if you look at this example here underneath, it says which data value, if any, appears to be an outlier in the set 21, 26, 23, 18, 27, 38, and 25. And why does it seem to be an outlier? So if you kind of look at that, hopefully you notice that 38 is much higher than everything else. The rest of them go from 18 to 27. That's the lowest and the highest. And then we jump up to 38. That's a whole lot higher than all the rest of the data. So if I have an outlier, it's really going to affect the mean, median, and mode. So when we say that the outlier is $16.50, they want us to know how does the outlier affect the mean, median, and mode. In order to decide that, in order to decide that, oh, hold on, I don't know why that thing popped up. Um, go away. There we go. In order to decide how it affects it, we need to take it out and do the mean, median, and mode with just those seven values. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that for you really quickly, and you can copy it down. So when we recalculate the mean, this time when we add all the numbers together without 1650, I only get 60.7. This time I divide by 7 because I took one of my data values away. And you see that the mean changed a whole lot. Now it's down to 8.67. And that's actually a whole lot closer to what the rest of the data does. The mode is still 825. And the median, you can just look at the list from the previous example again and take off the 1650. The median instead now would be $8.65. So the me putting the outlier in the data, it made the mean way too high. The median didn't really change, and the mode did not change at all. The median only changed five cents, which really is kind of negligible. So the outlier made the mean higher, but it did not affect the median or the mode. And so we don't really have to worry about that. So part B just wants to give one possible explanation for the outlier. You could think of all kinds of reasons why somebody makes a whole lot more than somebody else. Um, so maybe that person is a manager, or maybe they've worked there longer than somebody else. There's lots of reasons that outliers might occur. Now, one last thing, now that you can see sort of how an outlier affects the mean, the last thing that I want you to write down and add this into your notes if there's an outlier, the median is always going to be the best measure of center. If there's not an outlier, then the mean is going to be the, mess, the best. Mean is the best when there's no outlier. Median is the best, whoops, I have to write up a little higher, when there is an outlier. Okay, so that's a good way to help you decide which measure of center is the best. And that's where we're going to stop for today.